Welcome to V8 Nation, talking all things motorsport with Rick Kelly and Paul Dumbrell. Hello, everybody, and welcome to V8 Nation with Rick Kelly and Paul Dumbrell. A huge, huge hour ahead. We'd love to hear from you anytime. You've got any thoughts, V8 Nation at crockmedia.com or on our Twitter. We've had a bit on the Twitter over during the week, actually. We'll get stuck into that later in the show. And a lot of it uh, relating to last week was myself, Paul Dumbrell, and Dave Reynolds. Uh, Ricky's back from holidays, but I'll speak to you first, PD. But firstly, actually, even bigger news. Bigger than you, PD. You're not the biggest star in this week because Sam Newman is going to join us very shortly to talk all things motorsport. But PD, how you doing? Going well, thank you. Yeah, what a, what a good get to, we've, we've got with a semi, uh, uh, Sam John Newman coming in, 300-game uh, player for uh, for Geelong. Oh. So superstar in the Eastern States down in the AFL and uh, certainly a very, very big motorsport and a car fan as well. So it'd be good to have a chat to him Who later you, on the show. AFL, who do you follow? Collingwood is my team, Ooh. so we're, we're the premiers, and uh, you're only as good as your last game, and we're, we're pretty damn good, if you ask me. All right. Well, the man who's been away for a couple of weeks, enjoying himself in Italy. Uh, great job last week by Dave Reynolds filling in. We'll get stuck into that shortly, but Rick is back. How are you doing, Rick? Very well. Hey, look, thanks for having me back. I was a little bit nervous over there, lost a few nights sleep on the holiday, wondering <laughs> if you guys were going to have me back or not, so I'm, uh, I'm pretty pleased. I tied Dave up at our workshop today so that I could come in uh, and replace him, so uh, thanks again. Don't know about you, PD, but I, I thought thought for a lot, lot of last week's show, Dave was going to be back until he, he mentioned Julia Gillard and then he just started telling people some of the big names in motorsport, how much they're on per year. I yeah. thought, yeah. that's done him over. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, he sort of just sort of threw out there what Garth's salary was, <laughs> what Courtney's salary was. So uh, we might have baited him knowing that we we're going to get the result that we wanted, but uh, it, it, was, it was quite funny in the end. It he even told well. us how much you earned as well. Yeah. It, was, it was quite it's interesting. interesting. He knows that. It must be going through my computer. Yeah, it must mm. be. Now, PD, before we uh, went into the break, we were just discussing how, and it was a 2000, was it, when Sam Newman was uh, involved uh, in a car race? And you, well, probably didn't put your best foot forward. And uh, <laughs> we're going to find out who exactly is to blame because uh, you and Rick have been able to pull the big names in again. And Sam Newman joins us in the studio right now here at V8 Nation. Sam, welcome to you. Thank you very much. Uh, going back to 2000, not quite sure you remember or not, You're but right. uh, was it PD's fault? Uh, no, you're right. I don't remember. I'm impressed to remember what I did last, last month, let alone 11 years ago. What did I do, Paul? No, well, you actually drove a V8 super, you drove a, a Commodore, a Commodore um, V8 supercar, for actually for my father's team in the Gibson Motorsport. I think it was I sponsored did. by Mattel uh, I at was the time. Ah, oh, yeah. That was the first, that was when they had the crash boxes. Yes, yes, I, yes, yes. Didn't they? Yeah, yeah no, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I nearly broke my wrist trying to drive that thing. Yep. I yep. had never driven one of those before. Yep. And now you have the, uh, the sequential gearbox, don't you? Yeah, yeah much easier. Much, much easier. easier. I had never driven one of those before. And um, uh, I think actually still suffering today from, uh, I don't know if anyone <laughs> out there listening or watching has ever driven Bit of tennis a, elbow. Uh, one of those cars, but um, John Bow tried to uh, teach me how to drive it yep. in, in a day. Yep, and I was hopeless at it. So you, I you, actually, you actually didn't do too bad. I've got the results here, Sam. You change, finished I could change 24th. Up, I couldn't change, change down. down. Yeah, yeah. Tough circuit the Grand Prix as well to debut at. So a lot of corners. Yeah. Hard to learn, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's very hard That's to learn. I, my one claim to fame is I drove a Lamborghini and came third in the Nations Cup to the yes. late Peter Brock. Yes. And Darcy... Russell. Russell, well mm -hmm. done. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'd be very annoyed that I forgot his name. Darcy Russell in a Viper. Yeah, and very I came nice. third. So I remember standing on the podium, got a great photo of the late Peter and Darcy and myself. Yep. Yeah, oh, sensation. You also qualified pole in a Ferrari. I did at, at Sandown as well. We won't go into the exact details I, about how you qualified I, I'm pole. I'm going but... into those details. <laughs> I uh, I was of course the slowest driver, and they go in the slowest order first, and it was fine. It was very overcast, and I finished my lap. And as I went across the <laughs> finish line, it started to absolutely persistently rain, and I was about eight seconds ahead of any other driver and I started off on pole and I got a little silver medal for it yeah, lovely. and by the time we got halfway to the first corner when the race started I was about 18. <laughs> hmm. So Sam you still enjoy your motorsport and, and, your, and your performance cars have you got a, a few cars still at the moment? Uh, I have uh, I have some cars at the moment they're all <laughs> old and stuffed like me uh, <laughs> actually they're not old and st they're old but they're not stuffed I have a, uh, a genuine Shelby 500 Cobra Mustang. Really? Oh. Genuine. I uh, have my name on the register in America. I have a 350 Shelby Hertz um, manual 
Mustang. Yep. I'm in the register yep. in the Minnesota. I have a 66 Thelma and Louise Thunderbird, as impeccable as you can get, a concourse really? Thunderbird. And I drive my everyday car as a 67 um, a convertible Mustang. Lovely, lovely. Special and, and, cars. And so have you restored these yourself uh, uh, over the time or a bit, a bit of both? Uh, no, I haven't. Res I've had them restored. Yes, sure. I've had yep. one of them restored. The other three I bought restored. Yep. And they are really, they're fantastic cars. Yeah. The good, the good thing about the old muscle cars, I'm actually restoring a 66 Mustang myself. Oh, I'm getting something to do. <laughs> Instead of selling yourself, yeah. I wouldn't exactly get behind the tools. But um, they're, they're great cars, aren't they? You look back at um, all what these cars are worth. And I actually spoke about something the other day, like you know, a nice you know, mid-60s Mustang or whatever it might be. They're actually worth quite a significant amount, amount of money. Uh, if ever the market comes good in the States, I'm not sure how the States are going at the minute, <laughs> uh, those, um, the Shelby 500, some of them are worth about 400 grand. Unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, and the Hertz, the Hertz, which uh, Carol Shelby yep. uh, Hertz used to rent them out, as yes. you would know. Yep. That's how they became Hertz uh, 350s. I bet you don't know how they got the name 350. No. Um, um, they are uh, absolute collector's items. It's yep. about like what the E-Type used to be yep. when it was uh, yep. in its prime. Now, do you, do you know how the 350 got its name? People no. think, oh, it's the engine size no. or the displacement or the number of cubic metres or whatever. <laughs> it's the number of feet space that Ford gave Carroll Shelby in his warehouse. They gave him 348 square feet of space for him to build his cars and he said well 350 we'll call it a 350 and that is an absolute really? fact no one very, ever knows very that very interesting there's a documentary i think on the good old discovery channel about how he took his cars overseas and raced against some of the other guys uh, at le mans i think and, and yes, did a fantastic I've job seen so that. do you drive these cars or are they, are they yeah. strictly for display i drive the, the uh, i drive them occasionally yeah. um, uh, the thunderbird is a convertible which i drive a lot in the summer and the other two I uh, take out occasionally. Yep. If I go somewhere, I don't yep. just drive them around yep. the city, but I take them on the road somewhere, yeah. enjoy them. Yeah. They have no mod cons. They don't have so back, air conditioners. Back to they, back, back that's to, right. They the are absolutely, it's like driving oh, the last century perfect. Heading into tonight, I, for myself, I'm not a massive follower of football, so I thought just. You know, quickly before we head in, quickly bash your name into Google, see what comes up. Got onto <laughs> Wikipedia, and did it? Did it say? <laughs> no, it's, it's probably much more Dick complimentary head. than mine, to be honest <laughs> right. with you. But you're the only guy I can find in there that's got a heading that says controversy. Yeah. Now, for me, I think this is an important question because when you become an athlete, one thing you don't think about is how you're going to be perceived and what what's going to happen when things go wrong with the fan mm. base. So, a good question from my point of view is how did you go, particularly with a heading like that? In, in wiki dealing with with the negative feedback sometimes you get f when incidents happen mm. and and sometimes people th see things as being being bad or they've got their opinion fans generally love to voice their opinion on it H how do you go with with that initially when it hits you it's always hard to deal with but how do you how do you get through that well look I look at it really as a backhanded compliment. If people are so interested in my pathetic life that they want to keep talking about it. Mind you, they're only interested in it because of the contro controversial things. But the controversial things I've been involved with, I don't think I've been most of them directly responsible for. Like, um, an ex-girlfriend of mine ran over me in her car. Uh, that went global. That did. I don't know how I could be blamed for that. A bloke punched me at my doorstep uh, I don't know when I open the door I don't know how I can actually directly be blamed for that I did paint my face black and pretend I was Nicky Winmar uh, only because I like Nicky Winmar and I was trying to pretend I was an Aboriginal how that was considered to be racist I don't know to this day uh, but that's another subject I had my pants pulled down by Shane yes. Crawford on the footy show and uh, there in all my glory not uh, was I uh, if he'd given me some warning I could have just fashioned it to something <laughs> vaguely reasonable for the cameras but uh, no uh, that was my fault because you did that and I think the only other uh, controversial thing I've done is uh, I dressed a Caroline Wilson up yes, as a mannequin yep. dummy and um, got into trouble because um, apparently we weren't like we weren't allowed to uh, um, uh, send up women mm. uh, because mm. I treat everyone the same, same. Mm. and just on being a motorsport show Sam what car what type of car was it that did run you over 
<laughs> no, that would have been a whole one. of those lighter Korean cars, yes. but it doesn't matter how light they are. No, <laughs> when they actually it. back over the top of you, mate, it can smart. No doubt. Now, uh, not only cars, you're into motorbikes and, and boats, aren't you, as well? Uh, I'm, I, I have my motorbike license. I haven't ridden a bike for a long time, but I, I have a boat into all that sort of stuff, and I love watching the motorsport on the television. I'm a Grand Prix addict and a V8 yeah. addict, and I love uh, Marcus Ambrose in the NASCAR. He's going well, isn't he? For, He's for, going for a, great. For I don't, a guy you, that doesn't race ovals, it's so hard to break in. It's like, I guess, a rugby player going and play AFL. We're seeing that moment. It's so hard to do. You He's would understand well. how hard that is to uh, drive at those cars at 200 miles an hour yeah. oh. around those oval circuits. You would know exactly yep. what I'm talking about, and yep. you would probably be very good at it, both of you, but to break into that, and they don't like imposters, the Americans. No. Uh, there's no, a clique of own. about... 10 yep. that really like to keep it to themselves they and they don't did. like one Pablo Montoya and they don't like uh, Marcus <laughs> Ambrose, Ambrose but Marcus is, uh, is doing great. Yep. He certainly took a little bit to break through, didn't they? They served him up the first 18 months just for no reason, just to show him, hey, this is American soil and, and look out, we're, uh, we're the boss over here. So good on him for getting through that first yeah. initiation. Yeah, but he's uh, great on the road circuits of course so. well, yeah, hopefully he wins up. one this year uh, well, La last year I couldn't believe it he was saving fuel and then turned he his turned engine his off. engine off and wouldn't restart you That's just right. wouldn't read about no, it you wouldn't uh, that is uh, that is karma or fate yeah. or whatever yeah. it wasn't well, meant it was to. actually in one of the races two weekends ago um, there was two teammates leading first and second under safety car with two or three laps to go and the guy leading wasn't going to make it home on fuel so he turned his engine off the guy in second who was his teammate Pushed him around yep. under the safety car for two right. laps, and then he had enough fuel to win. Yep. You're joking. Yeah, yep. I saw it. Yep. Yep. Incredible. It's incredible. Incredible stuff. So. so you still get out on the track for just general track days in your cars for a bit of fun, or not Not so much uh, anymore? No. The la last time I uh, went, we uh, the footy show uh, is sponsored by Crazy John and Nissan. Nissan, yes. I drove one of those uh, new Nissan um, GTRs down yeah, yeah. Yep. at uh, Phillip Island, yes. and uh, th they are just the quickest car on the road. I don't care. Very beside your cars, yeah. they are. I don't care what you put out in the road. If there's anything with the Bugatti, the Lambic, yep. if there's any car quicker than that, I'd like to know what it is. But really? for, for a car which is still quite expensive, yeah, but, 180 but, grand. Yeah, but but still, for something like that, for Nissan, it's like a mini race car. It's unbelievable. It I drove is. one overseas and it blew me away. Yeah, they are. The, and their gear change is just, they've got, yep. yeah, anyhow, that's yeah. just no, that's incredible. Good. That's the only yeah, time no. I've uh, took a, a young lady who was a, a PR girl for a PR woman, lady, for <laughs> lady, <laughs> the PR person she was, uh, took her around and I did. I drove it reasonably quickly. Yes. You would uh, laugh at how quickly I drove it, but I, I managed to actually, she asked to get out after a while. She <laughs> said that was the most frightening thing she's ever done, not in my driving, but just she couldn't just believe how quick it was, the yeah, car. Okay. No doubt about it. Now, before we let you go, Sam, we really appreciate you dropping in. Uh, you mentioned off air, you've seen Winton a couple of weeks ago and the boys are involved <laughs> here. We'd, yep. we'd like a, now Rick's blaming PD, PD's blaming Rick, the stewards are going to get involved next week. We would like a neutral opinion. Somebody might have been watching I, on the TV. What, what I would say, I've learnt this uh, I learnt this very early, uh, either because I was the recipient or I was the offender. I think we call it a racing incident. Perfect. Yeah. I'll that's what that. we call it. I'll set up for that. I've learnt that term very early. It's just a racing incident. No matter what you do, it's a racing incident. And that's what they should go with when they have to front the stewards in a I couple of weeks? I think so, yep. Yep. Right. yep. And just allow them to work it off. Well, they've worked it off, off track. Mm. Be done with that, you think? Yeah, don't get it. Look, there's another great term in uh, football, certainly. Don't get angry. Get even. Yep. I agree with oh, that, Sam. <laughs> oh, I'm very oh, happy no. with that. That's uh, I've Things got, got to settle the score next race. <laughs> Sam, we appreciate you joining us here at V8 Nation That's and uh, hopefully you join us again sometime. Uh, thank you very thank much, you Sam. Sam. This is V8 Nation with Rick Kelly and Paul Dumbrell.